I think yeah. in connection with the recently released Jerry Anderson A Life Uncharted, the full story of Dad's life and career and how his life shaped the shows we all love so much, I wanted to talk to you about Deep Fake. Oh, right. Okay. Now, as you well know, probably by now, uh, a large part of the interview with Dad in Jerry Anderson A Life Uncharted is original audio files that have been lip-synced to by an actor called Rolly Hyde. Mm-hmm. And uh, Deepfake AI has replaced Rolly's face with Dad's. Yes. Uh, and so the effect is essentially Dad telling his story on screen for the very first time, but using original, authentic audio. Um, yeah. Now, the fan fact this week is that at one point during pre-production of this documentary, we were also considering recreating a Deepfake audio version of dad that would oh. be it would have been capable of saying anything that we wanted wow so okay. we were talking to a company uh, strangely enough based in ukraine so uh actually probably a, a good thing that we didn't end up requiring their services um because yes. that could have made things very very tricky and it would have been very very sad um beyond the Indeed. the obvious all, uh, sadness already but uh, essentially what was going to happen, we were going to feed in approximately two hours of audio of Dad talking across the years. Their AI system was going to learn Dad's voice. And then their system would be created by an actor performing with the right kind of pace and tone. Yeah. Words that we wanted Dad to say. And then in real time, their AI system lays over the audio on top and creates a deepfake audio which then mimics the performance of the person saying the words. Ooh, does that make wow. sense? Yes, it does. That's, yeah. So uh, you, yeah. if you're not relying on just typing it out and all, all being said in a monotonous yeah. way, uh-huh. it actually gives you all the ups and the downs, the inflection and the emotion that the actor puts in, right. recreating the, the voice accordingly. Mm. Now, Ben and I, the director Ben Field and I, fairly early on decided that that was not a good idea because we wanted the audio to be as authentic as possible and to have dad saying the things that he would have said in his own words and not us yes. creating new things to put in his mouth. But that could have taken it down a very, very, very different path. So uh, being one of the first people to have seen the documentary, Richard James, I'm going to ask mm. you, based on your experience in the cinema at the BFI for the premiere and seeing the deep fake on screen, how do you feel the result was with the video deep fake versus what might have been with an audio and video deep fake? Well, I think the key is trust, isn't it? Mm. When you hear the authentic video, uh, audio rather, yeah. you trust that that is what Jerry said, that these are his own words. That's what you're hearing. Mm. If there was an added element of a, a deep fake voice, mm. I wouldn't trust that that was... What Jerry no. had said, would say, Absolutely. might have said, and suddenly it becomes rather editorial, doesn't it? Yes. You might have made him say, well, anything mm. uh, to suit your narrative. Yes. And one of the great things about the film, I think, is actually it doesn't suit anybody's narrative. It's Jerry's narrative. Mm. Uh, that's There's no sort of, um, uh, you know, no one's coming at it from any strange angles. Uh, it's just a straight down the line. This is yeah. what Jerry thought, and well, that's because says, we trust the audio. Yeah, and as he says in his own voice, this is mine, as in this is my story. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Wow. That, so how so, far did you get? Did you actually sort of exchange files and maybe get a, a test sentence or two out of... Uh... No, we, we, we listened to a few of their versions they'd done. So they did, right. uh, they did a Barack Obama, right. and they did a Mark Hamill, a young, oh, right. a young Luke Skywalker uh, yeah. voice. Yes. Now, you see, interestingly enough, of course, they would be, I suppose, performances, wouldn't they? And that, again, that's the difference. I can see it working, you know, in a company like Big Finish, for example. I mean, I hope they don't go down this route, but you could see how such a thing might be attractive if you're producing an audio drama mm. and you want uh, an actor who's no longer with us, their voice yeah. with the, you know, blessing of their estate and family and so mm. on, because that's a performance. Yeah. Whereas if you're taking a person and literally putting words into their mouth, that's mm. a slightly different thing, I'd say. Mm. Isn't it interesting? But there you go. We yes. we didn't go down that route. What you have no. seen is accompanied by audio, which is true and authentic and virtually yeah. unedited. Um, really, only edited yeah. to, to clean up clicks and pops and hisses and 
mm-hmm. long, 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 long pauses, and even some of those made it in still. Um, yes, so there you go. Yes. Could have could have been a very, very different thing, but maybe there's something interesting we could do with that technology in the future because, uh, you know, aside mm-hmm. from the ethical uh, elements of it, where it could be yeah. misused in a in yeah. a in a non-fiction setting, in a fictional yeah. dramatic setting, I think it could be quite exciting.